Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. I thought, you know, the having is is just under a day away, um, so why not why not do a live stream and and then talk about it? Just trying to post this. All right, um, so let me see if I can pull up a having countdown. Here's one. So 23 hours, two minutes. Uh, looks like it'll be on April 20th, uh, just after um, the turn of the day, right? So, I mean, if you're on Eastern time, in the states then it'll obviously be on april 19th if you are you know in europe or something it'll be or asia it'll be april 20th so i mean it really depends on on where you are uh, as opposed to the date so i guess for some of us it'll be on april 19th for other people it'll be on april 20th i tend to just measure all these things by bitcoin by its utc time you know weekly closes by the utc time it's like we're looking at it eastern right um so, I mean, I think it, it, you know, just saying April 20th is probably um, the way to go, but I'm sure some people will say April 19th, especially because that's where it will happen in the, um, in the, in the States. So let's go over to, to Bitcoin. It's currently just below 61K. Um, I don't really have an agenda tonight, to be completely honest. I just thought, hey, why not throw on a live stream, talk a little bit about crypto. Uh, you guys know my thoughts on the market, obviously. I've made those very clear, um, you know, and I I do think that that gold breaking out and ETH Bitcoin breaking down does have ramifications on the market. And and if you look at at what has happened to altcoins ever since ETH Bitcoin broke down, they just can't they can't really catch a bit against Bitcoin, and they just keep on bleeding, right? They just keep on bleeding. Uh, Bitcoin's kind of staying the same so far, but the altcoins. Kind of just keep on going lower and and this is exactly what we saw just before rate cuts last cycle as well um and so what you would look for when you do get volatile moves by bitcoin whether to the upside or the downside it should be fairly detrimental to the altcoin market so if bitcoin were to you know to rally back up to the eight week sma then i imagine it would break alts down on their Bitcoin pairs, if it were to drop to the bull market support band and then bounce or something, I imagine it would break all Bitcoin pairs down as well. And so that's kind of the, you know, sort of the the dilemma that that altcoins find themselves find themselves in at the moment. Um, but I, I also think it's important to remind ourselves that even when you're in larger trends, um, there can of course be counter trend rallies, right? So, you know, even though I'm bullish on, on Bitcoin dominance, like I have been for like two and a half years, it doesn't mean you're not going to occasionally get pullbacks along the way. We did see a pretty big pullback by dominance right after the spot ETF. Um, I'm not really convinced that we have to have a big pullback by Bitcoin dominance after the halving, but if it does happen, just know that the trend is likely still intact. Uh, and it's so far, Bitcoin dominance has been doing a really great job of just holding 55%. I mean, I've actually been pleasantly surprised that it's been able to hold it. And um, I, I, I assume it will continue to go higher uh, as the months um, continue to sort of pass us by. But let's go through. If you guys have any questions, we will um, uh, talk about them. And uh, Ivan says, how are you? Doing fine at the moment. Um We got a lot of comments up here. Yeah, 24 hours to go. Uh, no, I'm not going to be doing a 24 hour stream. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I won't be able to do that. Um, I will have uh, other duties to attend to. I do have four young kids, um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to do a 24 hour stream. But uh, maybe if I were in college, I would have. So hopefully, there's someone out there uh, that's doing the 24 hour stream. But it's not going to be me. Um, Someone says, Emily says, hello from Central California. Uh, hello. I was actually looking at um, uh, the YouTube stats recently. 
And I was looking at, let me see if I can pull this up. Analytics, audience. Where is it? All right here it is. Okay, so here is the, let me actually go to lifetime. So if you look at my lifetime analytics uh, based on age and gender, you can see that 94.4% are male, only 5.5% female. Um, and statistically, most of you are between the ages of 25 to 44. Um, so if you're a male between the ages of 25 to 44, then there's you're not alone. There's a lot of other other people that are that same demographic as well. But it does, you know, it does really make you wonder, like, how do you actually get more uh, women in crypto, right? I mean, I have to imagine that that one thing that would be helpful would be for all the uh, the the relentless meme coin shilling. If I think that is probably not <laughs> the way to, to to reach a lot of a lot of people, but. Um, we'll, we'll see. I, I have received some messages about that. You know, I think a lot of people would just prefer like, you know, not the whole crazy open mouth thumbnails and all that kind of stuff, but, but something a little bit more, um, realistic, but yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's interesting. Um, and, and of course, most of you are at least, I guess a third of you are from the United States and about 9.5 from the UK, five and a half from Australia, 5.4 from Canada and 4.3% uh, from the uh, Netherlands. So Netherlands is representing some there. Um, let's go back over to Bitcoin where we're currently around 61K. Um, someone says, uh, why are we dumping? You know, I, I, I've talked a lot about how, you know, I mean, look guys, I, you know, there could always be a, a bounce after the halving or something, but you know, th there is a lot to be said in terms of, um, you know, just kind of being ahead of where we normally are at this point in the cycle. And I, again, I know it's not cool to point that stuff out, but you know, we saw the same thing happen last cycle. We got really far ahead and then we, we basically spent nine months cooling off to get back in line. So I don't know if that's going to happen again. Um, it probably depends on, on, you know, monetary policy as well, but just something to keep in mind, right? Something to just like kind of keep in the back of your head that that could play out and it wouldn't necessarily mean anything. Um, same thing happened last cycle. I, I think that, you know, when you get into a period where it's essentially up only for a while, um, any type of move to the downside just seems like unbearable, but I mean, you can see where we are, um, at this point in the last two cycles, we were still 50 to 60% below the all-time highs. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not that crazy. Diminishing returns. I do think we'll have diminishing returns again this cycle. Um, you know, whether it's a left translated cycle peak or not, uh, whether you get a peak in 2025 or 2024. Um, yeah, I mean, it really just depends on on a lot of different things and how how everything uh, plays out. Check markets, gold oil pumping hard on the war news. Um, yeah, I mean, gold's now at 2,400. But I, I would say, I mean, you know, there gold has, has been building up to this for a long time. And and now it's broken out. So, yes, of course, we're going to find reasons. I mean, you know, back in 2022, when you had the whole, like, you know, Russia-Ukraine situation, we, we saw gold go up. And we said, that's still ongoing, by the way. And then it still came back down, right? Um, so... You know, I mean, you have to think about that too, right? Like that is is something to consider because, um, yeah, I mean, like if it if it, if we were just going down here, we'd find a narrative to support it. So yes, I mean, you can we can always say there's a reason for it, but there's also been um, stuff like that in the past, and you know, it's, I, but I, I think you know we saw gold building up here. It made sense for it to break out. I've said for a long time it's going to break out, and when it does, it's a risk off signal for the cryptoverse. And you know that was met with a lot of uh, criticism, of course. But here we are, and gold broke out, ETH Bitcoin broke down, and uh, the cryptoverse is is stuck in traffic on Struggle Street right now. Uh, thanks for all the content, no, yeah, sure. Um
Someone says green candle in today, April 20th. My, my guess there's going to be a lot of volatility tomorrow, which probably means we're not going to do anything. But if I had to guess, I would say there's going to be a lot of volatility tomorrow um, as the having. I, I guess the issue is that really it would be on Saturday if it's UTC time. So technically it wouldn't even be tomorrow because, you know, it'd be the, on Saturday UTC. But I, I suspect that, you know, going into the having and just after the having, there's going to be a lot of volatility. Um, and, you know, you could make a case either way. Um, you know, you know, if you look at the first, if you look at other local tops and you kind of see like what happened going into them. Um, and, and, and by the way, I mean, it could be more significant than just a local top. I mean, I, I don't want to imply that it can't be, it, it very well could be. And I I've said before that it could very well be something like that. Um, but you know, in a lot of these times, like kind of, we've seen the market just sort of slowly bleed back down at these tops, you've got these rallies back up to the eight week SMA after getting a few week move to the downside. But in 2020, late 2021, we basically just went back down, um, you know, pretty far. In fact, kind of back down to this level here, which is where this base would be. And that's, that's pretty, no, that's pretty far down. So I really don't know. I mean, I really don't know which way it's going to break, but um, I, I hopefully, hopefully you have a plan, you know, hopefully you have a plan uh, to navigate it. Um, my my guess is whatever happens, all Bitcoin pairs are gonna are gonna go down a lot. Is is what I would suspect over the next couple of months. <laughs> Can I talk a little bit about Bitcoin dominance? Um. I mean, you guys know my my thoughts. I'm, I'm guessing you're being sarcastic, but I I, I just suspect it's going to go to 60% this summer. That's my view. I just think 60% is likely going to happen this summer, and and I I just hope people are prepared for it. Um, I, I feel like I've done the best I can to try to prepare people. I think too, like at this point, I've either sold you on the idea or I haven't, and so it almost seems like kind of useless to make you know keep making one hour long dominance videos. It's like you either buy it or you don't, right? You either buy the idea or you don't. And at this point, you know, with it being at 55%, 55.5%, it already went to 57%. You know, I, I do think it could top out, right, in the 60s, not too far from here. And so you have to be, I mean, I have to be careful because I don't want everyone to, you know, finally believe it when, when it actually finally hits the top. I mean, I, this is why I've been bullish on dominance since 38%. Um, I do think, you know, a good part of the move is behind us for dominance, but I, I still think there's a little bit more to go in it. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens um, in the next couple of weeks for Bitcoin, uh, whether it gets the move back to the eight-week SMA or not. Again, example here where you go back up to it. Example here um, in 2019 where you go back up to it, even above it, right above it in those two cases, and then an example here where you you went back up to it, but it, it took it a little bit longer, right? I mean, like. You know, we, we had a little bit of a pullback. And then the third candle here, which is the one we're currently in, was a pretty big move to the downside where it actually, you know, went down to that wick right there, right? It went down pretty far. So, you know, whatever happens, my guess is sometime in May, um, you, you know, you, or maybe June, but you would get back up. And it could even be like the next couple of weeks if it if it resolves like this right here. But even that could still end up being May. Um that you go back up to the eight week. But again, you know, if it, if you get a larger move down first, that move back up to the eight week might not be as impressive because then the eight week estimate would have come down quite a bit. Yeah, I, I know. I'm not really looking at the news, but I, you know, I don't really talk about the news on here, but, um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I will leave the news to you guys. What's a good question to ask? <laughs> I don't know. Someone says once the Bitcoin race becomes the space race of this era, also we have a blip in the history of in the history books. 
I do think that like you can make money on alts because there is alt season like once every four years or so. But I, I think it is true that most alts will just bleed back to Bitcoin over the longer haul. And so you are better off just kind of if you are in the altcoin market, occasionally taking profits back to Bitcoin just so you lock those profits in. Um, if you're if Bitcoin sort of your unit of account, right? So, you know, if you don't really want to use the US dollar as your unit of account and you just want to treat one Bitcoin as one Bitcoin and say, I don't really care what its USD valuation is worth, because even if it goes down, it'll probably recover eventually. Then, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I do think it makes sense to to value your portfolio in sats and not US dollars. And I know like when you're going through your first cycle, it, that seems insane, right? I mean, like it seems insane, but by your second cycle and your third cycle, you really start to understand like why you, you value your portfolio in Satoshi's over, over, you know, US dollars, because it's all about preserving the Satoshi valuation of your portfolio. And a lot of those alts just go to zero. Um, again, like some of them won't, I mean, some of them, will will likely you know survive obviously i think ethereum will will survive but you really have to be careful i mean you, you do and I, I know like people are like well whatever but you know you find yourself again where a lot of the alts are, are not even really that far off of i mean they're just putting in new lows against bitcoin right i mean a lot of these alts are putting in new lows against bitcoin and so um there really wasn't a great time to be in that altcoin over the last three years right i mean like look at eth bitcoin it's been in a downtrend since December of 2021, right? I mean, there hasn't really been a great period to buy ETH over Bitcoin and hold it for a year, you know? I mean, or for a couple of years. Maybe if you cherry pick this low here, you could find an instance. But I mean, for the most part, it's just been bleeding. Um, the same goes with with a lot of with a lot of altcoins. So you have to be. I mean, you certainly have to be careful with them. Someone says hello from Singapore. Can you talk about alt season in 2017 and monetary policy at the time? Well, in 2017, the Fed had been raising rates for a little while, but the main difference is that rates were relatively low, right? So. It's not like it was a super aggressive rate hiking cycle like we've seen this time. Um, I mean, a lot of these bull markets are, are basically just the market kind of like adjusting to higher interest rates and seeing if it can handle it. And when it does, the market goes higher and then eventually it can't. And then and then the market caves. But yeah, I mean, you had an alt season, um, you know, over here. I mean, rates were really low. They were only like one and a half percent. So technically they were going up, but they weren't really that high. I mean, you know, the, the cost of capital is still relatively cheap. And so that's why, I mean, I, I don't think it, it it was as bad. But once you got, you know, to to one and a half, two percent, then you can see what what ultimately happened to the crypto market. It's more like the rate of change, I think, than anything else. This is a pretty big rate of change, but. Um, please talk about a scenario where the Fed doesn't cut rates until 2025. So I do think they will cut, to be clear. But the market is saying only one cut in 2024. And then one cut all the way out till April of 2025. That's what the market thinks right now. My suspicion, as I've said, is that the pricing out of rate cuts will cause them to get priced back in. Um, because once, and the reason, if you think about it, like why that would be the case, if you if you see rate cuts get priced out, then businesses are starting to actually going to believe that the Fed means what they say and they're going to go higher for longer. If businesses believe it, then they're going to change their spending. You know, they're, they're, they're the type of spending. They're going to cut costs. They're going to lay people off, right? If they just think that rate cuts are just not really ever going to come anytime soon. And so just the market believing that rate cuts are not coming will probably cause them to, to actually come quicker. Um, on a day like today, obviously, a lot of people think there's only going to be one cut this year. I suspect you could get multiple cuts this year. And I think it's possible to get a cut this summer, you know? Um so yeah, I, I do think that it is possible, even though I know the market is not really calling for a cut until um, September at the current time. Someone says, hello from Tasmania. Wow. Is he going from uh, California? 
Do I think Solana will overtake ETH? Uh, no, I don't. Um, if you look at the sole ETH valuation, I mean, it, it, it sort of looks like it's, you know, at the top of the range here, right? If it's an oscillator. Um, so these are, these are sort of natural questions that come up about altcoins when they've rallied against ETH or Bitcoin for a while. Do you know, do, they, do you think you're going to overtake them? A lot of times those questions come up at range highs, right? So, um, just the fact that you're asking that, you know, and I know, I know I've looked at the sole ETH valuation for a while here. Um, but you have to be careful with that sort of stuff because a lot of people will think that, especially when you're near the range heights. And then and then it just ends up being no different than than before. Someone says TLT spiked. Um yeah, so it's, so so bonds are a way to hedge, uh certainly if you if you want to be um if you want to hedge. It is, in fact, dubious speculation. Can I talk about Plan B's prediction? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really don't think Bitcoin's going to go to three hundred k. I do think eventually it will, but I don't. I don't think it's going to go there this cycle. Um, I mean, we 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 basically had the same disagreement last cycle too. I mean, like I I was um, more conservative. He was more optimistic. Um, but with that said, uh, you know, I, I also would argue that he's had a lot of great predictions. A lot of things have worked out. So just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I just think that you're, you're, you're probably not going to go to 300K. That would be basically like a 5X from peak to peak. And last cycle, we only did like a three, you know, a three and a half X from peak to peak. So I just, I, I don't think you're going to see that happen this cycle. But I do think it is, a, I think it's attainable in future cycles. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's going to happen this cycle. Someone says they're female. I got into crypto because I wanted to learn about it now as compared to when I made it with dementia. No, I think it's great to learn about. I mean, I think it's great to learn about. Oh, we got someone from Brazil. Someone says they think that women are by nature more risk averse. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times, yeah, like the, um, you'll see more guys take on a lot more risk and, and you know, like sometimes it works and then sometimes it really doesn't work. I'm trying to find more questions, but you guys are all just saying the same thing. You're talking about geopolitical stuff, which I don't really want to get into. Um, and... I think the issue is that, you know, we always find a reason, you know, we always find a reason, but um, I mean, remember, I mean, like ETH, ETH saw a top before the merge, a month before the merge. And the reason why I've said before that we have to be careful with this one was because it was a month before the halving. And also, um, you know, this FIB retracement kind of shows that, that would be a, an area that would be potentially difficult to get through. And it, it is proving difficult to get through, right? And if you look at this, you know, we, we're sort of falling below the before, below the 3.618. The 2.618 is all the way down to like 47K, right? I mean, that, that would actually be below the bull market support band. Um, so if you were to go there, it would basically be sort of a crash below the 20-week SMA. Um, I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I mean, I, I do suspect that Bitcoin will go below the 20-week SMA this year, but I don't know if it's going to happen like immediately or... If it's going to be like a 2019 style thing where we chop around for a few months and then go below it. Someone says diminished interest. It's really interesting because think about this, guys. We are a day away from the having, and the social risk is 0.1. No one cares. <laughs> like... 
Like, no one cares. And that's why I, I think we're more similar to this phase before rate cuts than we are to sort of this uptrend over here where we're putting in higher lows. The social risk just put in a lower low, which is more similar to what we saw back over here in kind of the 2019 phase. So I think that is ultimately where we are right now in the cycle is just before those rate cuts arrive. And, and people are losing interest, not because they don't like crypto, but it's just that they're struggling, right? They're struggling with, uh, with, with, with finances. Maybe they're worried about their job. You know, inflation is brutal. And this is why if you look at prior market cycles with, you know, traditional markets, this is why inflationary periods are just so brutal in the markets because, you know, the consumer struggles with all these higher prices for everything. They have less disposable income. But, you know, I, I kind of just think we're in this phase right here where social interest is just really, really low um, and could stay that way. I mean, honestly, it could stay that way for, you know, the rest of the year, frankly, at least through the summer. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see it, the social risk, you know, stay in the in this lower area for a few months, maybe bounce back and forth a little bit. But um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. But you're right. I mean, the social interest is, is really has really fallen, um, even though the having is only one day away. If you look at YouTube views, for a lot of these different crypto YouTube channels, um, you know, they were basically at 2 million just a month ago, month and a half ago. And now they're down to 1 million across all these different crypto YouTube channels. So definitely a lot of interest has been lost in the cryptoverse recently, which, again, is why as social interest goes down, Bitcoin dominance goes up. Right. And we've talked about that a lot. Um, and you can see it. Right. I mean, here's. Bitcoin dominance without stables, as social interest goes down, Bitcoin dominance goes up. Because if, if you need, if you want to see alt season, you need a lot of new retail investors coming into the space to frankly buy your bags, right? But if, if they're not coming into the space and there's just not a lot of interest, then the altcoin market keeps on bleeding against Bitcoin. When Bitcoin dominance tops out, what do you chart your alts against? I think it still makes sense to chart them against Bitcoin. If you want to chart them against ETH as well, I think that makes sense. I wouldn't chart them against really anything else. Uh, not like, you know, not ongoing. I mean, I think Bitcoin and ETH make the most amount of sense. If you want to compare altcoin valuations to other altcoin valuations, you can do that. But I, I don't think it's as relevant. Gold running at this particular time versus Bitcoin is undeniably a bad look. I think it really is what we saw like last cycle. It's, you know, gold broke out and and when it breaks out, risk assets falter. It was the same thing. You know, it's the same. It's legitimately the same thing we saw last cycle. And I just feel like so many people don't want to believe it because of the having. But what about the merge with ETH? I mean, everyone told me after the merge, ETH Bitcoin was going to go up. And look, it, it, it has only gone down, as we said, it was likely going to do. Um, you have to be careful. You have to be careful with the narratives. It's more so what are the charts saying? And what the charts are saying is that gold is broken out and that ETH Bitcoin is broken down. And I said for years that when ETH Bitcoin breaks down, that's when the cryptoverse will struggle because it will represent a source of liquidity drying up. Right. And now, now that you got your first weekly close below the 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 range low there, you can kind of see just how how much the altcoin market has struggled on their on their Bitcoin pairs. Someone says the inverse head and shoulder target on gold is likely is 2,500. I don't know anything about the uh, the whole inverse head and shoulder. I've said before, I think we should leave the head and shoulder stuff to shampoo companies. But I think that, you know, 2,500 is, is definitely a realistic target. I wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback from there. But it's one of those things where, like, you know, you spend three years waiting for it to break out. And then it breaks out. And then everyone's waiting for the pullback. <laughs> you just don't get one, right? So I, I do think if there is a pullback by gold, then it probably would just be a, um, you know, an opportunity because I do think it's going to go higher for several years. Like it's not, you know, when gold breaks out, it doesn't just break out. Um, and then in the move immediately, it, it, it usually breaks out and, and has a, a pretty impressive move that, that lasts for a while. So my guess is going to last for a while. Um, you can still get pullbacks like this, like happened after it broke out in 2008, uh, where it broke out and then it actually had a pretty massive pullback. But even in that situation, it was a lot quicker to recover than, you know, than, than risk assets. It was a hedge, right? It's a hedge.
someone says when is a good time to accumulate alts um I, 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 I mean, look, it's up to you. It's really up to you. I, I don't think alts make sense because I just think dominance of Bitcoin is going to go up, you know? So if you want exposure to crypto, I think you're better off with Bitcoin. Uh, with that said, Bitcoin risk is still relatively high right now. Um, as I mentioned, I, I try to be as transparent as possible uh, with, with Bitcoin and, and what I'm doing. Um, maybe not as possible because, I mean, I do focus some of that on ITC premium. But if you look at the risk levels, you know, as you go up the risk levels, I, I think the idea is, as I've said, to dynamically DCA out because you never really know um, where the top's going to be, the local top. You don't know if you're going to go to the highest risk band or if you're going to top out somewhere in between. So by taking some profits along the way, it, it tends to work out. Um, that way, you know, you take some off the table in case the market nukes. Uh, but you still have some in case, you know, in case the market keeps going up. So far, we've seen a lot of like 20 to 22 percent corrections over the last year and a half or so. So far, this is about an 18 and a half percent. So a 20 percent correction would put it at around 59K. A 22 percent correction would put it around 57K. So that would be an important level to watch the reaction from. Because if it reacts like it normally does from that level, then you would expect at least some type of relief. If you don't get a reaction from that level, then it might mean the market is changing. Remember, it was actually when all Bitcoin pairs broke down and ETH Bitcoin broke down over here that Bitcoin finally got a larger correction. Um, right now, while ETH Bitcoin broke down, all Bitcoin pairs haven't broken down, but they can also break down very quickly. We saw how much they wicked in just a single day uh, not too long ago. So, I mean, you know, you could find yourself tomorrow where all Bitcoin pairs are, are below 0.4. Um, so it, it certainly is possible. And I, I really do hope my, my, my goal, my focus has been to help people realize that alts are incredibly risky and, 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 you know, Bitcoin exposure can give you exposure to the upside. But if, if Bitcoin drops 30, 40%, the altcoin market gets annihilated. Um, and if the altcoin market doesn't get annihilated, it's only because Bitcoin went up. Right. So if you just, I mean, Bitcoin's kind of gives you that exposure, um, I also think having some cash can make some sense here, as I've noted, especially if you dynamically DCA sold in the 0.7 to 0.8 wristband. Um, but, you know, you know, I'm not asking you to like go sell everything or anything like that. I just think that, you know, you want to make sure you manage your risk. Um, you want to make sure you're preserving the Satoshi valuation of your portfolio. And the way that you do that is by not being knee deep in the altcoin market when you're on the verge of rate cuts. Because when the verge of rate cuts happened last cycle, we saw... After ETH Bitcoin broke down, I put about a tweet about this and I did a whole video on it, right? I said, last cycle, when ETH Bitcoin broke down, the altcoin market dropped like 70%. Now, maybe this time is different, but I'm just telling you that was my experience last cycle, right? My experience last cycle was ETH Bitcoin broke down and then alts basically just slowly bled for like nine months, six to nine months, right? If you exclude the pandemic, six months. Right? It was brutal, right? It was just brutal because it was like there was no end in sight. It felt like it was never going to end. Um, I mean, you can see a lot of these alts are, 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 you know, just sort of slowly bleeding back to Bitcoin. So that was kind of the sort of the purpose of all these dominance videos to help people recognize that that Bitcoin uh, does provide relative safety over altcoins. Um, and that, it even, you know, if Bitcoin were to get a big drop from here, it's still well off the lows, whereas the altcoin market really isn't that far off the lows. You know, I mean, like, it's really not, you know, in fact, most of them didn't even put in new all time highs. Even Solana, which rallied a lot, didn't put in new all time highs. Cardano is nowhere close. XRP, Doe. I mean, a lot of these coins are nowhere close to their all time highs. So if Bitcoin gets a correction, where do you think the altcoin goes? Right. I mean, it potentially goes to a lower low. That's what happened last cycle. I know people just blame it on on everything, but we always find an excuse every cycle for why it happened. Um, and so I, I think that just kind of sticking, you know, with a certain strategy for me, it's just been Bitcoin heavy crypto portfolio and then have some cash and fixed income accounts earning interest and then use that to navigate crypto, right? So if you get dips, you can use, um, you know, if you get big drops back to below 0.4 risk or whatever your risk tolerance is, my risk tolerance is 0.4. But if you get big drops to your risk levels that you're comfortable buying at, then you have some cash. You have some cash flow to take advantage of that. Uh, but you also have Bitcoin to give you exposure to the upside. I mean, even, even here, Bitcoin's up 4x off the lows.
how did I get the conviction for your calls in the face of haters? I, I think it was, I mean, for, with, with all this, it was just like, I've seen it before. Like, I, I remember last cycle DCAing altcoins, like, from Q3 of the bear market year through the ha through the early part of the halving year. And then most altcoins put in new lows in the halving year. And I was just like, hell, I could have just stuck with Bitcoin that whole time and been so much better off, you know? So I was like, next cycle, I'm going to do it differently. After the top is in, I'm just going to preach the good talk about Bitcoin dominance and get people to realize that altcoins are really, you know, alt season only comes after we go back to, you know, a lot looser monetary policy and QE, right? That's when alt season comes back. And alt season comes back when the haters give up, right? That's when it comes back. You know, you can say, you can call it all season all you want to. I don't really care what you call it, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, look at the chart. You know, show me where alt season was over the last three years. You know, and in, in, in the Bitcoin dominance chart, show me where alt season was. I don't see it. I mean, is this is this your alt season, right? I mean, is that is that your alt season? No, these are alt seasons, right? That's what you're looking for. We're not there, right? We're not there. The only way you get to alt season is for dominance to go higher first, right? And then once it's higher and all the DGENs give up, then you get alt season. But as long as the DGENs don't give up, guess what? They keep on spending, you know, like crazy and inflation is still an issue and the Fed has to go higher for longer, right? Once you break the animal spirits, inflation finally comes back down. The Fed pivots. And then Bitcoin dominance goes down. But I just, I don't think we're there yet, right? I don't. I, I think that Bitcoin dominance is going to go to 60%. Where is the eight week? I think it's at like 67. Um, but I mean, it's going to move down quickly because the, the price is going down quickly. So, I mean, like, you know, it's at like 66.8K right now. But, you know, I mean, because the, the price of Bitcoin has moved down so much in a very short period of time, you will see it sort of roll over in the coming weeks and start to come back down. Unless we go right back up. Someone says they need a Bitcoin only portfolio tracker. You know, there, there's a lot of the portfolio trackers, if you look, will have a little button that you can click that'll convert it from USDT or USD to, to Bitcoin, right? So there are a lot of trackers that do that. You just have to maybe hit the toggle the button that has your USD valuation of your portfolio. If you click it, um, some of them have the option to view it on, on your Bitcoin valuation and some even have it so you can view it as your ETH valuation. Um, so maybe maybe the portfolio tracker that you use already has that feature and you're just not aware of it. Because plenty of them have the feature. If you're using one that doesn't have the feature, then uh, I don't know what that portfolio tracker is doing, but they need to start implementing it. After the halving, what is the narrative? I think the narrative after the halving is just win rate cuts. Is I think that's the have I think that's the narrative. It's just the market screaming at the Fed to give us rate cuts is, is what I would guess the next narrative is going to be. Fed said no, maybe no rate hikes until 2025. Yeah, I again I I think the pricing out of rate cuts will cause them to get priced back in. So because because the consumer gives up, the you know, the the businesses give up, I think them saying that and the market finally believing higher for longer means that it started, it's, it's probably time to start fading higher for longer. I've been a big proponent of higher for longer forever. You know, I was in 2022, I said, we're likely going to go to five and a half percent for the terminal rate. And most people were saying we weren't going to go past three and a half percent. But now that we're at five and a half percent and we've been here for, you know, nine months or so, remember the median number of months that the Fed pauses is eight. And we're already beyond that. I think that in the same way, the market underestimated how high the terminal rate was going to be. I think they're underestimating the number of rate cuts we're going to get over the next year. They're currently only pricing in two rate cuts over the next year. That's an issue, right? That's an issue. And you can see what's happening. Markets are, are rolling over. And it's not just crypto. You know, you can see a lot of, uh, a lot of um, equities rolling over too. So, you know, it, I think it's a problem when all these rate cuts, a lot of these rate cuts get priced out. And it's because they're getting priced out, which my guess in not too long from now, we're going to see a lot of them get priced back in. So 
I would fade this. Honestly, I would fade this. I mean, it could mean a lot of different things. It could mean locking in, so you know, certain uh, fixed income type stuff. It could mean getting some hedges, as I've said before, like gold and 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 bonds. Um, but I mean, you know, with, with with things like bonds, I mean, they can still go down if if um if we keep getting in you know hot inflation prints. It's not like they have to have bottomed already. It's possible they have, but it's not. You know, it's not like they have to. Um, and and also my guess is that this summer, if Bitcoin dominance is at sixty percent, I, I think a lot of people will start to call for it to go much higher. But if if we're getting rate cuts uh, this summer, then you know might not go much higher after that, right? I mean, what would be the that would be the perfect narrative for people to say, oh well, you know, you're never going to have an alt season again because of of um, you know everything's just going to go in the spot ETF. But I, I do think what we first sixty percent, then we talk. That's kind of where I am. 60% dominance, then we talk. Someone says that's a nice white t-shirt. Uh, this is the uh, dubious speculation t-shirt. We have them in the store. Store.intothecryptoverse.com. I have no clue in hell why you would buy one. Uh, but if you need a shirt, you can go buy one. Is the cryptoverse still on discount? Yeah, just for the next day. After the halving, we're going to raise the prices of ITC premium. So you can lock in the price between now and then if you want the lower price. They're going to go up quite a bit. If ETH Bitcoin continues to fall into June, as you predict, will you then start buying alts or stay Bitcoin heavy until QB? So here's the issue with it is that alt Bitcoin pairs bottom before alt USD pairs. If you have a problem with that statement, look at what happened last cycle. Okay. Alt Bitcoin pairs bottom before alt USD pairs. So in order to figure out when alt USD pairs bottom, first alt, US, alt Bitcoin pairs generally have to bottom. Now that doesn't mean that all altcoins have to put in new lows, but you know, in terms of building off of a low that can then start durably outperforming Bitcoin, first all Bitcoin pairs bottom, then all USD pairs bottom. So, I think after all Bitcoin pairs find their low, then you have to wait a while after that for all USD pairs to find their low. Um so, you know, I don't, you know, if you convert Bitcoin to altcoins, you know, when Bitcoin dominance tops, you might be preserving the Satoshi valuation of your portfolio if Bitcoin dominance is topping out. But then the issue could be that your USD valuation of your portfolio is going down because while all Bitcoin pairs might be going up, they might be going down their USD pairs because Bitcoin's going down, right? So the altcoin market is really a slave to Bitcoin during this phase of the cycle. And that's why I've said forever, right? Just have Bitcoin if you want exposure to crypto <laughs> because, you know, I mean, you know, if Bitcoin goes up, it's going to go up more than alts. And if it goes down, it's going to go down less than alts. And generally speaking, some are going to break that rule, but generally speaking. Um, and as far as ETH, I, I've said before, I, I do think it's going to fall back through this wedge because that's exactly what it did last cycle when ETH Bitcoin broke down, right? We had this wedge and, and it fell back through it as ETH Bitcoin broke down. And we just saw ETH Bitcoin break down last week. And it seems to me like you know, it's falling, it's potentially falling through this wedge, right? You can see right here, it fell through the wedge after ETH Bitcoin broke down here. And then ETH Bitcoin just broke down. And it looks like ETH USD is falling back through back to that wedge, which is around 2200 or so. Um, but my, you know, my guess is that is that ETH USD will, you know, will go go there this summer is my guess. I mean, if not sooner, but I, I do think that if you just look at last cycle, I know everyone wants to compare this year to other having years, but I'm telling you, monetary policy plays a role. And if you didn't believe me last year, you should believe me this year because Bitcoin dominance kept going up. You know, most of the people that refuted the idea of monetary policy playing a big role thought that Bitcoin dominance had topped out. They should go back to the drawing board now that Bitcoin dominance put in a higher high, right? It means they were wrong. It means they were wrong. So I, I think it it makes sense to compare it to, mon you know, use monetary policy to guide the view of the uh, of the cryptoverse. Someone says the S and P futures are under five thousand. Um, 
Yeah, it looks like you're right. It looks like we are at a, that's a pretty big drop this week. 40, uh, 49.70. How will Bitcoin cycle correspond to the S&P cycle if it is left translated? Um, I mean, I, I imagine if Bitcoin cycle is left translated, then it probably means that the S&P is also uh, topping out sooner as well. Um, there's also a scenario where the top's already in. I mean, it's not necessarily, you know, something that I'm saying has to be the base case. I think there's, you know, compelling reason to believe that if, if the Fed pivots later this year and they start printing again, then we could go back up in 2025. But if they don't, if they really don't cut rates until 2025, like you know, one of the one of the one of them said, uh, then you know there there does exist that scenario that you have to that you have to consider, right? I mean, you know, I mean, we've seen we've seen markets find local tops in election years. In 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 March of 2000, actually, uh, the S and P found a local top or a macro top for a while, and um. In the 70s, it was in December, and then in in the first in the first big inflationary cycle, and then in the 1940s, the uh, the election year top occurred in the summer. So there's a lot of different periods of high inflation um, where the markets are just manic and, and inflation is running rampant, where you do see some tops in in election years. But also note that there is actually seasonal weakness in the S and P 500 around this time in election years, right? So it's not even it's not even clear cut. Uh, if you were to look at, say, you know, the S and P 500, um, and you compare, say, 2024 with the average of election years, I mean, you can kind of see that it's actually still well above the average of where it normally is in election years, right? So, I mean, there's there's some seasonality you can see here. A lot of times, the S and P kind of goes below its yearly open on the average as you get out into the May timeframe. Um, or, you know, May to June time frame. So that's pretty standard. Um, I mean, you can see just how more volatile this one has been than sort of the average. If you look at 2020, obviously that one was a crazy one to compare to. Um, and I'm not asking you to, you know, put a lot of faith in that one, but, you know, you can look at 2016 and see that this is, this one is currently outperforming that one. You can look at 2012. Actually, 2012 at this point was actually doing better than this year has been. But you can also see that this is kind of the phase where it, it, it you know, sort of fell back down until maybe like May, June timeframe. Uh, you can look at 2008. Obviously, 2008 wasn't really a great year. Uh, 2004. Here's 2000. And so on and so forth. Do I think the Bitcoin having will slowly drive price up? I think we are really far ahead of schedule this cycle. And I think we really need the market to cool off. I think that would actually be really healthy if it could. If it doesn't, if if all the animal spirits continue to run wild, then we probably, um, you know, then you get a blow off top that is, you know, uh, left translated and can be really bad for the longer term. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I hope I hope the market cools off. Uh, if like kind of like last cycle where all Bitcoin pairs have an opportunity to bottom out. Um, but I just I don't I don't think they bottomed out yet. I, I do think all Bitcoin pairs are going to go down. Do you think the Bitcoin will hit the middle or high end of the logarithmic regression rainbow chart? Well, we've already gone down two and a half log lines, right? I mean, we already done it. Um, so we've kind of already hit it. I think we could hit it again, maybe later this cycle, kind of like we hit it a couple times last cycle, but the two and a half log line rule has already been hit here. Can I explain what Bitcoin dominance is? Basically, it's just the uh, the you know the the market share of Bitcoin with respect to the entire asset class, right? So, like, if Bitcoin dominance is at fifty percent, it means that Bitcoin's market cap is half 
of the total market cap of the entire asset space, of the entire asset class. What all coins do I hold? I haven't been buying alts. I mean, I, I've said for a long time, I, I think, uh, you know, Bitcoin makes more sense at this phase of the cycle. If rate cuts, does Bitcoin go up or down? It depends on why rate cuts. Uh, if you look at history, there's examples where rate cuts cause asset risk assets to go up and examples where risk assets go down. And it's because it's why they're cutting. If they're cutting to kind of get ahead of any potential bad stuff, then risk assets can go up. In 2019, while Bitcoin went up when they cut rates, um, or sorry, Bitcoin went down when they cut rates, the S&P went up. Um, but there are times in history where the S&P goes down when they cut rates, if they're cutting rates because they get some type of really bad labor market print or something. Then they cut rates for the wrong, you know, because they waited too long and then the market goes down. So it depends on why they cut. There's not like a, an answer that that is going to be fitting for you. It's not like I can just unilaterally say that risk assets do X or Y when rate cuts arrive. It really depends on the specific situation because you can find examples of both. If ETH Bitcoin falls into lower regression band, then, then also fall, um, yeah. Someone says, greetings from Mexico City. Someone from Brazil too. If ETH Bitcoin pair plays out as you're saying, will alt season come at all or will it be a very short-lived alt cycle? So if it plays out like last cycle, right? Which is a big F, but if it does, it means that the alt season that you're wanting is not coming this year if the, if it plays out like last cycle if it doesn't play out like last cycle then maybe all maybe the alt season does come this year but if it plays out like last cycle where once rate cuts arrive the market bleeds for like 6 to 9 months then it it essentially means that um the market gets really boring you know and and then in 2025, maybe when everyone's given up, <laughs> then you get alt season. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think it's possible that you still get alt season in terms of like Bitcoin dominance crashing. But I don't think Bitcoin dominance is going to crash until you get until you see it at least at 60 percent. And even then, it's probably got to kind of move around, you know, from 60 to 61 or to 58. Right. It's got to bounce around for some months there before you see it come back down anyways. Oh, well, I got someone from Africa. How many to reach 800,000 subscribers? That's a good question. Um, let me go check. I'm at 799,857 subscribers. So if 143 of you could hit that subscribe button, I will be at 800,000 subscribers. I would very much appreciate it uh, if you could subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Got someone from Argentina. Um, so glad you found the chemistry to get a vault in 2023. It was a little late. Yeah, no, I mean, like some alts did okay. It's not like all alts have been terrible, but most of them have just bled to Bitcoin, right? And, you know, I think that the, the, the collapse of ETH Bitcoin is a really bad omen for the altcoin market. And I know it's easy to make fun of me for it and say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, but it's just what happened last cycle. I, I don't have to be right about it. I could be wrong, but it's just sort of a fair warning. Last cycle when ETH Bitcoin broke, alts dropped 70%, right? That's what happened. I didn't control it, right? That's just what happened. Um, so I don't know. Like, I don't know if they're going to do the same thing, but 
I'm not putting my money. I'm not risking my money on alts if you know during 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 a dom during a Bitcoin dominance rally. Uh, you're free to risk your money on alts if you want to, but I'm not going to risk my money on them. Um, I've also missed out on some pretty cool gains in the altcoin market. That's a fact too. You know, there's definitely some altcoins that have outperformed Bitcoin. Um, let's be real, right? I'm not trying to pretend like, you know, you know, it was the perfect idea not to have any alts. But I mean, I'm just saying for me, relative, relatively risk averse, if you see a Bitcoin dominance rally coming from a mile away, which is what I thought I saw and I was right, like, why would I go put a lot of money in alts if I just think Bitcoin dominance is going to go up, right? Um, just ride that Bitcoin dominance wave, you know, let the altcoin market bleed to Bitcoin. And then your purchasing power to buy alts with Bitcoin goes up, right? Even if Bitcoin goes back down, like, think about it. Like, think about it like this. Today, let's go. Maybe this is a great, a good way to explain it. So today, if you look at one over ETH Bitcoin, one Bitcoin will get you about 21 ETH, right? In in May, in, in um, December of 2021, one Bitcoin got you about 11 ETH, right? If you had, if you bought Bitcoin at the top in 2021 and right and rode through the highs and the lows, the your USD valuation is essentially the same. But guess what? You can now buy twice as much ETH with the Bitcoin that you have. That's why Bitcoin dominance matters, is because you took on less risk to hold a safer asset, Bitcoin, and now you can buy an altcoin for a lot cheaper. And if Bitcoin were to go down to 50K or 40K, or even, you know, even if it goes lower, right, 30K, in 2019, it first went to the 100-week SMA when rate cuts arrive, right? I mean, so, I mean, if it, if it does that, it could it could take a long time for us to get there. But that's where it ultimately went. You know, I mean, it went to the 100 week moving average. Um, right now, that 100 week SMA, it happens to actually correspond to that breakout point. Right? I mean, it's kind of uh, coincidental, but that's actually what it corresponds to. So, you know, if you get a situation where Bitcoin crashes, Bitcoin dominance likely still goes up. And so then, like, you might be upset that your Bitcoin USD valuation is down, but then maybe your Bitcoin will then fetch you 30 E. Right. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it really depends. It comes back to whether you believe in the future of the cryptoverse. Right. If you believe in the future of, your, of the cryptoverse, then, you know, for Satoshi's sake, value your portfolio in Satoshi's. If you don't believe in the future of the cryptoverse, then fine. Value your portfolio in USD. But don't come crying to me if your altcoin bleeds 90 percent against Bitcoin over the next 10 years or probably more. The Satoshi valuation is what is important. And, you know, it is, you can laugh, we, I mean, but it is, that, that is what matters is the Satoshi valuation. It shows you just how easy it is. And it's not just, you know, look at, look at Ada Bitcoin, you know, look at, look at one over Ada Bitcoin. In 2021, one Bitcoin would get you about 15,000 Ada. <laughs> Today, it gets you 141,000 Ada. All you had to do was stick with Bitcoin. Once the Fed made it clear, they were going to be raising rates and going to quantitative tightening. You didn't have to have any clue where the USD valuation is going to go. By the way, none of us have a clue. You don't have to have any clue where the USD valuation of Bitcoin is going to go. All you had to say was, look, we're going into a high interest rate environment. The Fed's going to be reducing the size of their balance sheet. Bitcoin is a safer asset. There's going to be a hell of a lot of regulation risk coming for the altcoin market. So I'm just going to ride that Bitcoin dominance wave convert alts to Bitcoin and wait until the Fed pivots. That's all you had to do. And then one Bitcoin over here got you 16, you know, 14,000 or sorry, 16,000 ADA. Today it gets you 141,000 ADA. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know which altcoins are going to become relics, but guess what? If you held ADA all the way down, then you're sure as hell invested and you hope it goes back to a new all-time high. If you just converted your altcoins to Bitcoin in early 2022, when I said was the time to do it, you have the luxury to just kind of come in at some point in the future and just kind of scoop up whatever altcoins you want at much cheaper Bitcoin valuations, right? That's why I say, don't marry an altcoin, right? Don't marry an altcoin. There's only one year 
of the cycle where it really makes sense to to to, to be heavier, really heavy into alts. Really, there's really like one year of the cycle where that that makes sense. You you spend one year watching Bitcoin dominance go down, and then then you spend like three years watching it go up, right? It's not that complicated, guys. It's really not. In fact, look at this chart. If this chart, I was looking at this earlier, it should convince you. Well, maybe not. It's dubious, but look at this chart. Six-month ETH Bitcoin candles, right? Look at this. And tell me, tell me everyone on here is not just overcomplicating the everlasting you-know-what out of it. Green, red, green, red, red, red. Green, red, green, red, red, red. You know, I mean, what's so hard about that, right? This is what happened last cycle. I don't know why people thought this time was different. It's possible that ETH Bitcoin bottoms in Q2 or Q3. I said before, it might bottom in June. That's kind of like my base case right now is that it bottoms in June. But that's going to be predicated on the idea that the Fed pivots this summer. If the Fed doesn't pivot this summer, I think they're making a bad, a really bad mistake, honestly. And you know, I do think there's a good chance we get a hard landing, but if they don't pivot this summer, I, I think a hard landing is probably locked in um, because the, the consumer is is starting to falter here. Um, just because you have some residual inflation based on lagging data, uh, it doesn't mean, I mean, it doesn't mean the, the consumer is healthy, right? But I mean, look at that. Look at the ETH Bitcoin six month candles, red, green, red, or green, red, green, red, red, red. Same thing, green, red, green, red, red, red. I mean, it's the same exact thing for anyone who cared to look at the damn chart, you know, but instead I spent the last two and a half years listening to the ETH maxis tell me how it was holding up well every step of the way down. And now some of them are starting to capitulate. And I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, some of them I think are going to be capitulating into that 0.03 to 0.04 range. And that could be the bottom, right? When they say, all right, Ben, you were right. Like, all right, well, now that you believe me, it's time to go back the other way. So you have to be, you have to be careful with this stuff. It's playing out like like it played out last cycle for anyone who actually cares to look at the chart and 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 they don't come on here and tell me that, you know, I'm ignoring all these higher lows on the ETH Bitcoin pair because I'm not, you know, I'm not. I re I recognize there's higher lows on here. But you know what else I recognize? I recognize lower highs, you know? So don't don't just look at at, at one of the charts, look at all of them. Right. I mean, you can see that, like, however you want to draw this out, the ETH Bitcoin is breaking down, you know, um, and you have to be careful when that stuff happens. And I mean, you know, I think it I think it's going to accelerate the breakdown into the summer months and then hopefully bottom out this summer. Just like it did on a similar time frame in the last cycle when you looked at those six month candles. Someone says chain link early mover last cycle. The issue with chain link, uh, you know, I, 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 with the Bitcoin valuation, look to see what it does here. You know, I drew this potentially out um, a while back, you know, when it was back up here. Look to see if it holds here at um, at 1700 sats, that prior low, sort of that back testing that, that trend line. If it can hold there, then maybe you have something, right? If it can't, then you're just, it's a falling knife, right? See if it holds support. I don't know if it's going to hold support. A lot of these alts aren't holding support. Like ADA Bitcoin sure as hell ain't holding support. Dot Bitcoin, I mean, what is there to say, right? Litecoin Bitcoin, as I said before, what it does best is bleed against Bitcoin. Or Litecoin bleeds against it. Link Bitcoin is just a Matic Bitcoin. I, I, think there's, I think there's a good chance that Matic Bitcoin will, will bottom before ETH Bitcoin. Um, so if you see Matic Bitcoin bottoming, then it might mean ETH is going to bottom against Bitcoin. But I don't. there's not really a clear evidence yet that it's bottomed. Um, I've said forever that once Matic gets below a thousand sats, you got to be on the lookout for it. And it's already gone below a thousand. So as it continues to bleed here, look to see if it can form a low, right? That doesn't mean the USD valuation is done bleeding even when the Matic Bitcoin low is in. The Matic USD valuation can go down after Matic Bitcoin bottoms. Same thing for ETH Bitcoin and ETH USD and ADA Bitcoin and ADA USD and dot Bitcoin and dot USD, right? It's the same thing. But either way, I mean, look, you have two scenarios here, right? I mean, the markets don't tend to go sideways for very long. So it's either going to go up or it's going to go down. My contention, my contention is that if it goes up, 
all Bitcoin pairs get racked. If it goes down, all Bitcoin pairs get racked. So Bitcoin dominance goes up no matter what, right? So that's why I've said, you know, rinse your hands of the altcoin market until lose from monetary policy arrives. That's been my view. Um, admittedly, whenever I whenever I get super vocal about it, uh, you know, inevitably someone does it, and then and then we get a bounce, and they hate me for three months. But um, it's been my view for two and a half years. You know, if it, if it took you until now to to get on board with the dominance train, that's not my fault. What's my long-term stance on ETH Bitcoin? I don't really know. I'd like to see if it can bottom at 0.03 to 0.04. Someone says, interesting that dominance isn't spiking as hard as a few days ago when we hit 60K. There's an interesting dominance chart, and that's like dominance excluding stables. Um and it's actually kind of doing what it did last. I mean, it, it it did something similar last cycle where it sort of swept the high and then cooled off for a little bit and then kept moving up. I think it's going to move up. It might it might cool off for a week or two, but I, I do think, we, you know, in May and June, you should see the dominance a lot higher, um, especially, you know, especially as we get further out into the summer, right? Like May, June, maybe even out to July. I, I don't know. I think the hard part is the dominance rally has taken a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So I don't really want to limit it to May or June. Like it could rally until August or September for all I know. Um, but I mean, it, it really depends on, on just how quickly it, it takes things to, you know, to, to, to play out, you know, and I, I don't know um, if, if, if for instance, right. I mean, like, 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 let's suppose if ETH Bitcoin bounces, after the having, like it bounced after the spot ETF, right? You see, after the spot ETF, ETH Bitcoin got a bounce. If it gets another bounce, then it, I mean, it essentially delays everything by like a month or two, you know? Um, so it kind of depends. Like, I don't know if it's going to get that bounce after after the having. Um, you can see that last cycle, we we did get sort of a similar type of bounce, but ETH Bitcoin hadn't actually broken the range lows on a weekly close, whereas here it already has. So, you know, I don't know. You got sort of your one, two, three. Um, one, two, three, you can kind of see it's already breaking. So I don't know if it's going to get that bounce at all anyways. And the last time it didn't get a bounce. Um, it didn't get that final bounce, right? It just broke through. So there's definitely like evidence to suggest that it could go, it could get a bounce. But my base case is that, is that um, ETH Bitcoin bleeds. You know, my base case is I don't, I'm not going to bother trying to predict every single lower high by the ETH Bitcoin pair. I'm just going to say, look, I think it's going to go down. If it goes up in a two-week time frame or something, so what? That doesn't change anything for me. It doesn't move the needle, um, just like all these other lower highs didn't move the needle for me. Someone says, you all expect a bounce from 58. I don't know. Where did it go? Um, how low did it go? I mean, it, it just went to 59.6. Um, so, I mean, that, so what is that? What is that measured from the top? So that's about a 19. So we, we've now gone 19% down. A lot of those pullbacks before were about 20 to 22%. So we're, it's getting pretty close to that typical pullback. If it's more than a 22% drop, if it's like a 25 or 30% drop, then you could still get a sizable rally off of that, like 2019. But it, it probably is even more definitive evidence that the local top is in, right? Because that's what happened in 2019 is after ETH Bitcoin broke down, um, you finally had a 30% drop as opposed to just like a 10 to 15% drop. Um, so if you get a larger drop, then it, it you could still get a bounce off of that level, but it probably is kind of some evidence that whatever comes after is a lower high. If you bounce it 20 to 22% down, then there's still a chance, right? There's still a chance that, you know, you could see another move up. But even in that case, you still have to watch uh, that eight-week moving average because that eight-week SMA is is potentially we're potentially going to get a weekly close below it um and, and we've we've i mean i shouldn't have to explain why that's important we've talked about it for the last year uh but you know when that happens it can certainly mean the market is cooling off and, and you can see that it, it really cooled off over here last summer as well as it went below the eight week moving average same thing in 2021 both peaks same thing in 2019 right once you get that weekly close below the eight week sma 
It doesn't mean you can't get another face ripping rally back up to a lower high, but it does tend to mean that the party's going to be over um, for at least a little while. For someone who has a higher risk tolerance, do you think these saying also right now is a bad play? I think it makes sense to do what you're comfortable with. I mean, like, I, I don't think that, like, what I'm doing makes sense for everyone. Um, I think it kind of depends on where you are in your own journey. You know, I mean, if you want to take on more risk, who am I to tell you not to do it? You know, I mean, there's been plenty of people that took on risk and made a lot of money. So I, I think you have to remember, like, what's right for me is not what's right for you. Do I see Bitcoin hitting higher highs before a summer slump? Um, that's a good question. I don't really know. I mean, you know, with the spot ETF, we, you know, the market wasn't really looking that great. And then it it just spiked up and put in a new high, right? So like, you know, and then and then it and then it real you know radically sold off after it. Now, of course, we ended up going up a lot higher, but um it, it's really hard to say. I mean, I think that we're probably gonna get to the point where you know, everyone's gonna think at least that it's gonna go to a new high. Um, especially if you get some type of like rally like that all back up above the eight week SMA, like we saw in 2019 and 2021. I don't know. I mean, I, I do think there is a case to be made the closer you get to May and stuff that um, you're gonna see that summer lull come into play. I'm not gonna say it can't go put in a new high. I mean, I mean, look at the wick into the spot ETF, right? Look at that wick, right? I mean, if we replicate that, then, you know, it's essentially a new high, but the, I mean, it's risky, right? It's risky to sort of bet stuff on that. Again, I don't, I don't base my investment strategy on whether I think Bitcoin's going to wick back up to the highs or not. Like, that's not something that I even care about. Um, I don't really know. I mean, I, I do think there, there is some reasons to think that with ETH Bitcoin breaking down and gold breaking out, that it could turn into, into something more, but um, that something more could still be one or two months away, right? Where it, you know, like over here, it, after it fell below the eight week, it then still rallied back up for a few weeks and then it fell. Um, in 2019, after it fell below the eight week, you know, it still, it still rallied back up for a few weeks. And then it, it still, and then it finally fell. It took a while, right? I mean, it took a while and, and you might get something like that, right? Where it, it just takes a while. If it plays out like late 2021, that would probably be the most brutal way. Uh, to, uh, you know, to potentially put in a local top is to just not even really get a relief rally and just kind of go straight back down um, right after the Bitcoin having That would probably be the most brutal way. If that happens, look to see what happens to all Bitcoin pairs under such an environment. You can see that Bitcoin is, is going down today. It's down about three and a half percent and dominance is up, right? I mean, this is what I've, we've talked about forever, right? You know, you get into the phase of the cycle where Bitcoin goes down and Bitcoin dominance goes up. Just gas is it having the 19th or the 20th? It depends on where you live. Um, you know, in the uh, in the states, it looks like it's going to be the 19th. But if you're you're in Europe or something, and you're like UTC time, you can see it's potentially going to be the 20th. So if like you're in Europe or Asia or something, it's going to be the 19th. If you're in the states, it's going to be the uh, or sorry, if you're in Europe or Asia, it's going to be the 20th. If you're in the states, uh, it's going to be or you know just on uh, North America, South America, right? It's going to be um, uh, April April 19th. So it depends on where you live. Again, guys, make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, we have, I'm trying to get to 800,000 subscribers so it would in fact be nice to get there if you would not mind subscribing we actually just gained some so we are now at 799,904 so i just need 96 more people um so 
yeah um if you could subscribe that'd be great and also we do have the sale on itc premium links in the description below that's going to end after the having so just fair warning um any other things should we wrap it up What if the Fed raises rates this year? I don't really think they're going to raise rates. I mean, if they do, I think that would be a, a really bad mistake. I, I don't think they're going to. Um, but yeah, if they raise rates, it probably just makes Bitcoin dominance go even higher, <laughs> you know, frankly. Um, I don't think they're going to raise rates, but yeah, that's what it would mean. Could a rising alt pair on its total three valuation or could alt total three pairs on a day like today be an indication of future strength? Yeah, if, you, if you're seeing an altcoin kind of like outperforming most other altcoins, then it's probably an indication of future strength. There's a good chance it is. Not necessarily, but I mean, like not set in stone, but like I've seen that happen a lot of times where if, if an altcoin is showing relative strength in a dump, then whenever, you know, whenever there's the next relief rally, then it can it can outperform a lot of other alts in a, in a pump. Huh. How do I keep my ego in check after being right for so long? Guys, the, the reality is that I have, I mean, I haven't been right about everything. There's been so many things I get wrong. And that's how I keep my ego in check is because the markets humble everyone. Um, you know, yes, yeah, some some things I've been right about, but also a lot of things I've been wrong about. And, and you know, when you get things wrong, it humbles you and um, and the market humbles us all. Someone says they unsubbed and subbed again just for me. I, I appreciate that. Looking back, should Fed have raised rates a few months back? I don't think so. I think they're doing what they need to do. I don't know if I'm going to go live in 20 hours. Uh, I don't know. I do think there's going to be a lot of volatility, though. I think it's going to be uh, kind of crazy. It might not be tomorrow because technically UTC time, it's the, it, it'll be the next day. But you're probably going to see a lot of volatility going into the halving. So just be aware of that. Um, yeah. What does the extension from the 20 week look like? It's kind of funny. I uh, I put out a video about it um, and it ended up doing the same thing that it always does. And everyone overcomplicated it once again, um, which is kind of fascinating, right? It really is fascinating how like every single time it just does the same thing it always does, you know? Um, and every time no one wants to believe it. Right. Again, the trend, this trend line will eventually break um, because otherwise it just implies that Bitcoin will only ever go below its 20-week SMA and never get back above it um, if it if you carry it out far enough. So eventually this trend line will break, uh, but it hasn't broken yet. And um, I mean, I do think it will break, but not yet. It hasn't broken yet. Is it just a coincidence that TA aligns with macros, current war scare? I, I think we find reasons for things. Um, I think we, we we like to blame, we like to like rationalize why things are happening. That's my guess. Because like if, imagine this, like imagine if you had this like war thing, you know, like the whatever, you know, the current scare going on right now. And if the markets were up 10%, then everyone would just say, oh, they're up because it means that it means that we're going to start printing money to fight the war, you know? But if we're down, then people are like, oh, it's down because, you know, everyone's scared because of the war, right? I mean, 
whatever happens, you can find a narrative to, to support that view, right? So like if tomorrow the price is up, then people will say, oh, price is up on fears that the war is happening. Therefore, the money, you know, people are going to, the, the, the central banks are going to start printing again. Um, if the markets are down, it'll just be markets tumble on, you know, worries about tensions uh, across seats, you know? So, I mean, it, it, it really does feel like we look for the reason to explain the price but really price leads the narrative. The narrative doesn't lead the price. Whatever the price does, we'll figure out the narrative to go along with it, um, not the other way around. Um, also, the other thing too is once you hear about the news, it's already been priced in because, you know, I, I know we all think we're special, but, you know, there's, there's going to be other people that get the news before we do and algorithms that can, you know, price that stuff in way before we can. So by the time you see it, it's already been priced in theoretically. You know, it's not like it's not like you're going to go read the news on some news outlet and then be able to like get an edge generally speaking, right? Because if if you're reading it on a news outlet, then so have millions of other people. So what edge would you have? Actually, after some of the last tensions in, didn't we get a bounce where we swept the high in um in 2022? I think we did. I mean, it wasn't like we didn't sweep the the actual top, but we swept that local high, I think. Um, because the uh Iran invaded Ukraine like right here, right? And you had a, a long wick down. And then the market rallied back up and it actually swept the highs. So, yeah, I mean, like, it, it's certainly possible that something like that could happen. I, I'm not going to say it can't happen. Um, I mean, I don't know if this is exactly the same pattern or not. But yeah, like, if you take this and you just sort of overlay it to this one, right? I mean, you can kind of see that the market chopped around in this range and then it ultimately it kind of looks like it's deviating some though because it was like following it it bounced up it was following it and then and then the market rallied but then this time the market has kept going down but maybe because it's the whole re retaliation stuff that hadn't been priced in yet um but i mean you can see that it, it did go back up sweep the high right it swept the high and then it, it got a, a a big pullback so imagine how hard that would be for market participants if you go up and, and you sweep the high and then you drop into the summer, right? And that's why I think it makes sense to just have a strategy either way. I mean, like, try not to stress so much about it. Um, just have a strategy and 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 I, I wouldn't, like, try to overcomplicate it. I mean, because you also might not get that. I mean, you might not see that same type of, I mean, and it could also be dependent on other things. I mean, like, you know, if, if in May the unemployment rate comes in at 4% or something, then, you know, maybe the markets go down, right? Because they're like, oh crap, the labor market sucks now. Um, but if you get a lower print at like 3.7 or something, then maybe the market rallies back. Um, and people use that as the reason. Someone says 90% down on their meme coins back. I am sad to hear that. Uh, if you're if you're telling the truth, then hopefully you can maybe stay away from the meme coin market and focus on other things. Someone says if you're chasing news cycles, you always lose. I would agree with that. I, I think that, yeah, like the news isn't going to give you an edge on in the markets. Oh, did I say Iran? I meant um, I meant Russia. Yeah, I'm thinking about the uh, the current conflict and 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 um, and the and the one that's you know happened that sort of kicked off in uh, 2022. So yeah, I meant I meant um, I meant Russia. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if it. Uh... What happens here if it sweeps the low and then if it 
if it moves back up into the having or or what? Is the bull market support band of the eight-week SMA valid for total market cap chart? I, I imagine it would be something similar. Um, I think it would be something similar. So the eight-week for total market is at 2.43 trillion. So for us to get a rally back up there, it would from this level, it would be about a 12% rally to get back up to the eight-week SMA for total market. Am I up to date on the candidates tournament? Yeah, there's a tie for uh, first place with like, what, two games to go? All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, we are still, it looks like we're at 799,919, so I need still about 81 subscribers. Um, so make sure you guys subscribe if you're not, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium and IntheCryptoverse.com. Links in the description below. Sale is ending after the halving. I will see you guys next time. Bye.